Emmanuelle Charpentier seems relaxed this morning in her laboratory, despite working long into the previous evening. Several years ago, the microbiologist and her team made a groundbreaking discovery. Together with an American colleague, she figured out how bacteria defend themselves against invading viruses. In the process, she discovered that this natural mechanism can be used as a tool to modify genes. The result was the CRISPR-Cas9 enzyme scissors, a simple, fast, and precise way to alter DNA. What I think is, is really the most interesting and fascinating about this discovery is that you, you dig into the nature, you try to understand natural mechanisms of life, and you end up deciphering mechanisms that you can really use and harness for the purpose of, of biology uh, and, and, and biotechnology and biomedicine. Charpentier's discovery could be harnessed to treat cancer or other genetic diseases. But should we intervene in the human gene pool? A huge ethical question. CRISPR-Cas9 is already being used by plant researchers aiming to create a higher yielding strain of corn. It can also help create mushrooms that go brown more slowly and non-allergenic peanuts. Science is making it easier and easier to manipulate nature. Berlin is Charpentier's newest workplace. She was recently named a director at the Max Planck Institute for Infection Biology. It's the latest station in an eventful scientific career. Changes of scenery have led to inspiration. She hasn't yet had time to completely unpack. One thing Charpentier has brought with her is a patent dispute, not unusual in the world of scientific research. A U.S. team of scientists claimed to have been the first to apply CRISPR-Cas9 to mammalian cells. I think it's, uh, you know, um, inherent to, to, uh, to a very nice uh, discovery. Often uh, are associated uh, issues of, of patents, indeed. So this is a case for, for CRISPR-Cas9, and I just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just very confident. The future will tell who wins the patent battle. The priority now is to organize the laboratory and form a research team as quickly as possible. The French scientist has become quite a star with a host of prizes to her name. She's in high demand by the media. Charpentier says she's flattered by the attention, but she'd rather invest her time in her research. Despite past successes, she's still very ambitious. I think it's difficult to, to have a discovery that will be so, with an impact so broad as, as, a, as a CRISPR-Cas9 impact. But I will be happy, in addition to all the Anyway, we have nice projects and uh, we have nice uh, stories that we are developing in the lab. But my goal is more to, <laughs> to continue the research and to have the chance to have, uh, you know, other breakthroughs in, in, in the future. I think this is what is exciting as a scientist. CRISPR-Cas9 could help Charpentier capture the, the biggest scientific uh, accolade of them all. Here. In the media, she's been touted as a definite candidate for the Nobel Prize. She takes that in her stride. Actually, it would be a great uh, honor, but <laughs> I will see whether one day it comes, how I feel then. The 2016 Nobel Prizes will be announced in a few weeks' time. <laughs>